Here we have a type of question that's fairly frequently asked uh, in uh, electrostatics, uh, which is uh, we have uh, three charged particles, could be two, could be four, any number of charged particles, and we are asked where we would have to place another one, in this case of one microcoulomb, so that the net charge, uh, sorry, the net force on some of these particles is zero. In this case, we're looking for the net force on Q2 to be zero. So the steps to this type of question is always kind of the same thing. Step one, we need to find out all the forces acting on charge number two in this case. To do so, we use Coulomb's law in vector form. So we have uh, the Coulomb's constants times the charge uh, two times the charge three in this case to calculate the force from three on two. And we di divide it by uh, the distance between the two charges squared. And then we multiply it by the unit vector that goes from the source of the force, the one that's causing the force, in this case Q3, uh, towards uh, the particle on which the force is acting, in this case Q2. So in this case, given the coordinates here, uh, I have uh, zero uh, in uh, x direction and plus four, like from, to go from Q3 to Q2, it's plus four in uh, y direction and then I divide it by uh, the distance. This will create me a unit vector that points upwards. Now when I plug my numbers in, uh, I will get uh, the force as a direction, like the first part just gave me magnitude. If I multiply it with that unit vector, that gives me a force pointing, uh, that gives me a force as a vector. Uh, as here, all charges have been positive. Uh, that means that force uh, from three on two uh, is uh, pushing uh, Q2 away upwards, which was the same direction as my uh, vector that went from 3 to 2. If ever one of my two charges here would have been negative, there are no absolute bars here, then that would have flipped around the direction and I would have gotten the force that is attracting instead of repelling. Then we do the same uh, for uh, the force uh, on 2 by 1. This time uh, my vector that points from uh, q1 to q2 is, given those coordinates here, minus 14 in x uh, over a distance of 14, so minus 1 in x. And if I plug all of the numbers in, I get my vector uh, on 2 by force 1. I'm going to remove the question to make a little bit of space and put my step one to the left. Uh, so the next step is to calculate the net force. That's actually fairly simple. I simply add uh, my two forces that are acting on force two. And I also want to calculate at this point uh, the magnitude of that force, not just the vector. Uh, you're going to see in a second why I also want to calculate the magnitude using Pythagoras. Next step is to find the distance at which that additional uh, charge will be placed from Q2 so that uh, the, it can cancel out the net force caused by the uh, charges that are already there. So I need to find the force on two by four, which is equal to the net force that we just calculated. This was why I needed the magnitude of the force. So I just do Coulomb's law. Uh, actually here I should have put absolute bars uh, because I would absolutely want this to be uh, my magnitude. So here I forgot the absolute bars, so please add them in your version. Uh, here it actually doesn't matter because everything was positive, but if that additional charge for the Q4, for example, would have been negative, 
uh, we would want to take uh, the numbers out. So let's actually add them here, a little absolute bars. And then I get my distance at which uh, I have to place this charge from Q2 uh, so that uh, my net force uh, can be cancelled out. So anywhere, actually, if, I, if I'm drawing here, I draw here anywhere on this circle with a distance of 1.79 meters, I could place my uh, force, uh, I could place my Q4 to cancel out that force. We actually now know because uh, Q2 uh, is positive, that means I already know that it has to be right here, that location. Only that way it can cause a force that points in the opposite direction of Fnet pulling away Q2 and cancel it out. This brings us to step number four, which is to actually calculate the coordinates of this point here. To do so, I will introduce my vector R4, which points from the origin, so here it should be from the origin, uh, to that location here, which is actually the vector from the origin to the location of the charge 2 plus a vector from 2 to 3. That vector from 2 to 3 is having the length that we just calculated over here, 1.79 meters, and it points in the direction of Fnet. How do we get the direction of Fnet? Well, we create a unit vector, we take the vector Fnet and divide it by its own length. So we have a vector of length 1 pointing along the direction of Fnet. So if I multiply that with uh, any given distance, I will give uh, get a vector with that length uh, in that direction. So let's do that. So I am plugging in just my uh, coordinates here of where the charge 2 was, and then I add my 1.7 meters times, and here I put my F net from over here, divided by its own magnitude. So I get actually a unit vector without any units. The newton meters cancel out the unit meters, and you see I can add meters to meters, and everything works out. And I found my location of R4, which was exactly here. Note that if uh, my charge 4 would actually have had a negative uh, uh, sign, then instead of going in the direction of Fnet, I would have had to go in the opposite direction of Fnet, because then we would have had an attractic force, so in that way, in order to create this force that crosses Fnet, if Q4 was uh, negative, it would have had to be uh, down here. So that's it for this type of question. We're actually going to see this type of question again when we talk about electric fields, when we're going to place charges so that the net field is zero, and if we talk about the electric potential, when we're going to place charges so that the potential at a certain uh, location will be zero.